Welcome to Using iTrain video number two. My name is Bob. In the previous video we went through the installation of the software and we opened the demo layout. In this video I'm going to give you a quick 15 minute tour of the iTrain software. iTrain is a very sophisticated piece of software but what I would like to try and convey is the very neat, organized and uncluttered appearance of iTrain with an emphasis on minimizing the amount of windows, toolbars and drop down menus that you need to get things done. And that's important because it makes it so much easier to do things and perhaps more importantly to remember how you did those things. When you open a layout you'll always be presented with the same three fundamental windows. You have the overview window here which displays the status of each of the trains that you have selected to be used on this particular layout. We have the control grid down here which contains the throttles for controlling your trains and we have the switchboard here which is the simplified representation of your layout and where you can interact with the layout. In the toolbar at the top here we have the usual icons for creating a new layout, for opening an existing layout and for saving a layout. In the middle of the toolbar here we have the switch for connecting iTrain to your interface which interfaces iTrain with your physical model railway and uh, that interface would usually take the form of your DCC command station for example. And then you have buttons here, the go and stop button which apply and disconnect power from your model railway. Uh, you have a pause button for pausing all activities on the layout and you have a very neat button here called finish all and what that does is to gradually stop all of the automatic activities that are occurring on your layout and allows each of those um, activities to stop at their next destination. So it's a very neat way of stopping all the activities without an abrupt stop of everything. And then on the left of the toolbar you have the zoom keys for zooming in and out of your uh, switchboard and a quick button for getting the optimum fit. The menus at the top here contain the usual file drop down menu for creating a new file, opening file, saving files etc. You have an import button for importing files that contain details about your locomotives and wagons and you have an export button for exporting files about your locomotives and wagons. And then you have the usual printer setup and the exit button. The editor menu here contains all the editors that you'll use for creating your layout. Settings contain the settings that are specific to this particular project or layout. For example, it is where you would set the scale and gauge of your layout. As opposed to preferences, which contain details which are applicable to all, the, all of your projects. For example, the look and feel, the language that you use, the unit of length and unit of speed that you like to work in. Interfaces is where you enter details of your command station and there are a list of various different command stations and interfaces that you can select from. 
boosters is the editor where you would enter details of any boosters that you have on your layout for adding additional power. Feedbacks are the feedback sensors that you install on your layout in various locations. And um, they provide the feedback to iTrain so that it knows where your train is located. On the switchboard, they're represented by these little black symbols here, uh, which turn red when the feedbacks are activated, so um, when a train is present in this actual location. And accessories is where you enter all the details of the accessories contained in your layout. For example, each of the uh, each of the turnouts, the signals, decouplers, lights, railroad crossings, sounds, all of those are accessories. Track routes act as a kind of a memory module. They allow you to set a list of turnouts or signals in a particular order and set them to a specific state and reserve them. So for example, on the demo layout here, the, the track routes are represented by these blue dots here. If you click on the dot, you'll see that this track route has been set here. Or if I click on another track route, you'll see that it's selected a different path out of the station. Actions allow you to make things happen when certain conditions are met. For example, you can set logical operators. Uh, that just means if this feedback and this feedback is on, then do this action, which is to turn on or off a light. So there's lots of ways that you can make things happen in certain conditions. Locomotives is where you enter details of each of your locomotives. And there's a similar one for wagons. And there will be another editor for your trains. In iTrain, a train consists of one or more locomotives and any wagons that you may want to attach to that train. It, a train can be just a single locomotive on its own. Uh, it's whatever you want that uh, train to consist of. Train types is where you can enter different types of train, say a cargo train or an intercity train or a shuttle. And those types of train will have certain conditions put on them perhaps. Perhaps all cargo trains you want to prevent from going to a terminal platform in a station for example. Or maybe the cargo trains you want to restrict to a certain speed limit. Then we have train routes and these are where you can assign a route to a train which it will automatically follow. Perhaps it will go from one station to another station and then when it gets to that station it will wait for 20 seconds and then automatically move off to its next destination. For example on the a switchboard layout here, you can start a route by clicking on the green play button here and this train would then go off and start running that route. So if I click the button here you'll see the path has been defined and then down in the throttle you'll see the throttle has started to um, move and the train will start moving. Blocks are just like blocks on a real railway they are sections of track that you define that allow you to keep separation between trains to prevent them from crashing into each other. 
Um, blocks are a significant part of iTrain and we'll be doing a, a lot on blocks as we go through these uh, tutorials. And then we have stations. Now they are a very powerful feature within iTrains. And a station is essentially a destination where trains can stop. And it contains a set of blocks that belong together. Now a, a destination can be a, a train station or it could be an industry. And on the on the switchboard here, these stations are represented by these dotted areas that you see here. So the central station has been uh, uh, assigned as a station, but you also have this shadow station up here, which could be an area which is a yard or an industry where trains would stop. Um, and what tr uh, stations allow you to do is some very powerful things in routings. It's quite exciting and it's stuff that we'll get into later in the tutorials. And then the last of the editors is the switchboard editor. And this is where you would draw your representation of your layout. And on the left, uh, sorry, on the right hand side here, uh, there are the various tools for uh, drawing the components that make up your layout. The control menu is just a copy of the uh, the buttons that we have in the middle of the toolbar. The view menu gives you the options to turn off the toolbar or the switchboard or the con control grid down here. And it also contains the diagnosis section. So this is where you can actually run a diagnostic on your layout. So if you've made any changes to the switchboard or the layout in any way, you should always try to remember to run the diagnostic afterwards and it will highlight any issues that it's found and give you an easy way of correcting them. So you just click on the start button, all being well, nothing will appear on here. But if an error occurs, it will be shown on there and then you can click on it to uh, get more details of what that particular error is. The uh, keyboard is a keyboard that you can customize to your own requirements. So you can use the switches to turn on lights, for example, or to switch turnouts. Uh, to change signals, activate sounds, whatever you want them to actually do. The uh, feedback monitor gives you another way of uh, seeing the feedbacks on your layout. So it, uh, it mimics what is happening to the feedbacks on these layouts here. And you can turn them off like we've just done up here and back on. It's just another way of viewing the, the feedback. And in the view menu, we also have the speed measurements for your locomotives. And it's where you can define the speed profile or create the speed profile for each of your trains. And this is a very important thing to do to get accurate and repeatable stopping of your locomotives throughout the layout. And we'll be going through this um, in a later video, of course. And another useful feature within iTrain is the decoder programming. So this allows you to actually uh, do programming of your decoders, either on a service track or on the main track, and do that all within, uh, within iTrain. And for some different viewing options, you can change the way the layout looks. So you can go from the standard layout here to the wide layout where the, um, where the switchboard is shown across the full width of the top of the display there, uh, which is nice if you've got a wider layout. And then we've got, um, we've got the ability to also add extra um, switchboards, for example, so we could uh,
create another switchboard which you can have displayed on a second display if you've got that ability. So I could move this out and across and onto another display on a separate window and then perhaps uh, what we can do is uh, remove the switchboard from this window so we can maximize the space that we've got available here. So we could use this space to add more throttles for example by uh, clicking on the alt and the, the right arrow to add more throttles and then maybe add another uh, row of throttles underneath that so you can display all your throttles in one view. Well that was a very quick overview of the iTrain software but I hope it was enough to convey to you the very cleverly designed architecture that makes it much easier to achieve things. Just about everything that you want to do can be achieved through these three main windows or through the edit drop down menu. Each of the editors has a similar format making it easier to learn, quicker to find things and a whole lot of fun to play with. And the fun continues in the next video where I'll show you how to connect to your command station. See you then. Thanks for watching.